We rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears wherever you are on this planet we call Earth. And we want to remind you that if you miss portions of this show or others, you can check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking over Bumblefoot, rocking out to Bumblefoot, reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire, and following us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. You know what? It's that time once again as we bring in John Hudson for the unbiased UFO report. This is a segment where we get into UFOs, everything that's going on in the news regarding things flying in our skies. This is where we bring in the legendary Stetson-wearing John Hudson to take us down the Wu train and the UFO news. John, there's been a little bit of controversy happening right now in the UFO world, especially on Twitter and Facebook, regarding a conference coming up in a couple of weeks that involves Chris Mellon and Luis Elizondo. Now, this isn't a cheap conference. It is literally costing people $250 American to catch the event. Tell me about it. So this is this is such a challenging topic, right? Because, you know, from, from one point of view, uh, we are a community that is against uh, hoarding of information. We're all about, uh, you know, Freedom of Information Acts. We're all about disclosure of information. We don't want anyone policing or holding our data back from us. And then you have the situation where there's this conference announced where they're going to say, you know, all this new information is going to be given. We have all these great speakers. And, oh, you can come see us for just two forty nine ninety five, right? That's a very hard pill to swallow. At the same time, a conference is not a cheap thing to hold, right? And so I don't think any of us would want someone to take a huge hit on that. I don't have any problem with with someone, you know, breaking even plus a little extra on the side for for doing a conference. And in the case of this conference, they're doing one of these virtual things where you avatar and walk around and, and they, you know, they try to make it realistic. That costs money too. But because there's no transparency, uh, there's this perception that the speakers are getting paid, which well, who knows if they are or not. It's very possible they are not, and the conference is making all the money. But right now, with the economy the way it is in most places, 249 is a huge pill to swallow, especially considering the fact that most people don't have a huge budget for doing this kind of research in the first place. You know, at the same token, if I look at the conferences I usually go to, 250 is dirt cheap. Like most five, six day conferences I go to are like three thousand dollars. So, you know, so it's it's you can you can argue really well on both sides of it. And I think part of the problem is is that there's a complete lack of transparency. So you don't know where those fees are going. And second, there is um there's uh there was immediately a hundred dollar discount offered, which gives this impression that there's like incredible margins in that in that price tag. And so why are they, you know, why are they trying to, you know, get people to pay 249 if they're so willing to give it to everyone for 149, you know, right off the bat, just depending on what radio station you out you listen to. And the problem with this conference is this not only has Christopher Mellon, but this also has Eric Weinstein. And I don't know how familiar you are with Eric, but um, you know, Eric uh is touted as the the mathematician with the most followers on Twitter. <laughs> he likes that title. He's 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 one of the smarter humans that I've run into. Um, he uh, does a great podcast. He's on with Lex a lot, um, and he's this guy that recently came out in in favor and wrote this really nice apology to the community, saying, "I'm sorry, I didn't believe you. I was lied to. They kept it from me too. I'm mad." Like I'm mad that, that we were kept out of this research and he apologized to everyone on Twitter. So this is a cool, this is a cool cat, right? I mean, he's a, he's a smart dude and, and he's speaking at this conference and that's the first time he's ever spoken at such a conference. And I can't listen to it because, you know, I don't have the 249 to, to give up. So it's, it's a really hard conversation to have. Well, I mean, I think the big thing with, with Twitter is, 
And the argument there that I read wasn't so much about the price of the conference that was hefty at 250 bucks, which for us Canadians here, that's well over 300. And, you know, but the big thing was people complaining that Luis Elizondo and Chris Mellon were getting paid to do this. Now, both, if I'm correct, both Elizondo and Mellon have come out and said they're not accepting a dime for this, for speaking at this event. But that's and that's what I would debate. expect, you know. Yeah, for, and that I know I'm in the minority here, but I have no problem whatsoever if they were to get paid. Time is not free, you know. We we have to earn, like as a radio show, all of our listeners who are listening right now, we had to earn their time yep. because we had to be entertaining. If I go to yep. a conference. And that takes away from the radio show or or my own personal time, takes away from my family. I have to be paid for that because yep. that is my time that yep. I'm giving up for this event, you know. And, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's cash in hand or paying for my flight or my food or 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 anything. I, I do expect some sort of remuneration. And a lot of yep. others do too. So I know there is a giant... Uh, group of people out there who follow this topics very, very closely, who don't believe that any UFO researcher, any Sasquatch researcher, or any paranormal researcher should make money off of this, but you're allowed to make money off of something you love to do. You know, are and, you and tell, it's, it's are very you frustrating. Tell, oh, no, so please if, go ahead. If the number one researcher right now or person in ufology right now is Luis Elizondo that's like telling LeBron James or Wayne Gretzky or Michael Jordan or or pick a baseball player that they should not be paid for doing something that they love. It's ridiculous. Yep. Yep. I know. I know. I know. And, and the thing is, is, I mean, you know, even me, if I if I'm you know, if I go if I'm invited to go be an analyst at the conference, I may not get paid for it, but they cop my room. They pay for my flight. They pay for my food. I mean, and and that and, and if they can't do that, I usually won't go because I'm not going to fit that bill. Right. And so and so I think any of us with professional background in in a, in a in a speaking type situation, I think we're a lot more tolerant of it. But I think a lot of what what you said a minute ago really comes into it. And that is there's this culture aspect to this community, which is that if you're getting paid for it, you cannot be trusted. And and that's a and that's a that's a cultural thing that we 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 fight. And it's it's ridiculous because everyone's got to eat. Everyone's got to pay their bills. Everyone's got to pay their rent or their mortgage. You know, as you said, even if it's not what they do full time, if they took time off from work to go do it, that's that they're losing. We have to be realistic about this, man. I mean, we're all humans. We all have to eat. But at the same time, I, I do believe that um, just because of, of how sensitive this community is to the withholding of information, that one, they need to be very transparent about where those fees go. And two, I would like to see some um, formal announcement that all that information will be made available to the public for free at some point in the future, you know, whether it's a month from now or two months from now or whatever, just some point in the future, you know, it will be available for, or, you know, maybe for a much less, much lower fee. But um, I think it's, I think a lot of this is a culture problem. Yeah. Especially I, I could, I don't consider it a cultural problem. I consider it a community problem that this, this community does not believe that people should be rewarded for their hard work in any type of financial term. And I'm not in favor of that. Not because Spaced Out Radio or our company's uh, SOR Media Ventures Limited is a business, but people's time is worth something. If I don't put on an entertaining show, I don't get an audience. You don't get, you know, we don't yep. get followers on yep. on YouTube. And contrary yep. to the, you know, the rumored belief out there, we are not buying our followers. People are choosing to follow our show. Okay. Dave, if you were buying followers, you'd have a lot more. <laughs> I can tell you right now, if I was buying followers, we would be having that close to 100,000 marks so I can get the plaque right now and be making some money. Off of it. So let's move on here because there's an interesting comment by former Senator of Nevada, Harry Reid. Explain what's going on. 
Yeah. So, so my, my, uh, when I initially ran to this article, I, I really took it as just another one of the many articles that's, that's coming out in popular mechanics in, in, um, uh, you know, this one was in, um, you know, the raw, the raw story report, um, you know, they, they pop up where they usually don't bring anything new, but they do a nice synopsis of the situation for new people that don't know what's going on and for their readership. And so I like to keep track of those because I think they're nice. And I think the volume of them is interesting, but usually what's in them isn't. This was the exception, mainly because of things that you've talked about and I've talked about and other people have talked about. And that is the rub of the dating maneuvers that happened with this report. This whole idea that they can, you know, whitewash the past and only start uh, at a future date. And it turns out that Senator Reid agrees with us. And he was quoted as saying that there are decades of reports and investigations about UFOs to uncover what they are. None of those were included in the report. And it said Reid wants to know why only sightings between 2004 and, two, two, and 2021 were the only things considered. And so it was, you know, it doesn't mean that anything's going to happen. But for me, it, uh, it, I guess I should say it did my heart good that Senator Reid agrees with many of us and, uh, and, and was willing to go out there and, and make a public statement about it. Well, I think it's about time someone stood up for that. 2004 yeah. is garbage. Yeah. It, it, it's yeah. absolute garbage. And anybody who sits there and says, well, it's good enough for right now. No, it's not. The secrets that they are trying to keep on these topics happened between 1945 at the end of World War II and 2004. Yep. Well, and that report wasn't even 2004 to, to now. It was really just... 2019 it was till now it was really only the last two years those 104 cases just came from the previous 24 months exactly well anytime harry reed speaks up in defense of that i i, I appreciate that i'm not i'm yeah. not a you know he reminds me of canada's paul hellier though you had all this time to do something when you were in power and you chose to do nothing when you were in power publicly and now that you're out, you're going to be a big mouth about the subject. I don't like that. I think that's cheesy. Yeah, I, I agree with you, but I think what it speaks to is exactly the problem that Elizondo had with, with, um, um, uh, man in my head, I always think of him as mad dog and I shouldn't, I should know the, the, the gentleman's name, but the, the, the man who was secretary of defense at the time was that essentially it was his handlers. It was his advisors that were so worried about their manicured control of, of his image that they were afraid it would tarnish it. And I think that there's that kind of layer behind every single one of these individuals in power. There's some group of people that's managing their image, and they're the ones that keep them from talking about the issues they really care about. And so as soon as they retire, those people disappear, and suddenly what they really care about comes out. All right, quickly here, so we got about 90 seconds. J.J. Yep. Abrams, the famed director, has a new UFO series coming out this weekend. Yeah, and so you know we mentioned this before. Um, you know, it's it's just one of many that's coming out. Um, you know, everyone's kind of doing one at this point. But the reason specifically why I wanted to make a note of this one is because while it airs this weekend, uh, the cool part is is that the very first case that he's tackling is the Phoenix Lights which is a case that's kind of near and dear to the hearts of a lot of us and and one that a lot of us don't really feel gets enough coverage. And so I think everyone will be really pleased that, um, that, that Mr. Abrams has decided to tackle the, the Phoenix Lights as his as in his first episode. I think it's great, too, because coming off of the report that only goes to 2004, Abrams gets to hammer them with the Phoenix Lights back in 1997. Yes where there was over 60,000 eyewitnesses in that Phoenix metropolis area that actually saw it. John, I'm going to say a big thank you for coming on the show tonight. We will talk to you on in a couple of nights' time. Great reporting, as for usual, on the Unbiased UFO Report. We'll talk thank to you Thank you. Soon. And just real quick, I just wanted to say a thank you to Nikki. That was a fantastic um, that was a fantastic showing for her. And uh, I was just, I was really impressed with her, with how brave she was. That was cool. I thought she did well too. We'll talk to you soon, my friend. Take it easy. All right, here we go with the news.